go back? Uh, after that, you have to go back? Go back to America, yeah. Next week? Next week. Well, I'm going to Singapore for a week and then back to America. But my last class, my last class here will be next Friday, the next first Friday. of November. So if you have any questions you, uh, that you want to ask me, you better ask by the first of November. Yeah, Monday to Friday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah. Okay, we'll get started. We only have, uh, as I mentioned, uh, one hour today. There's a uh, group meeting uh, with all the students at 10 o'clock in one of these rooms. I'm not sure which one yet. I'll find out. There's a couple words I wanted to uh, just to bring up so that uh, that you know the definition of them and understand what they mean. They're not words that you hear every day in, in general conversation, but they're words that do come up from time to time and that are fairly common. One word is What is a pilgrim? A pilgrim. So a person who goes to some a specific place uh, because of religious reason. Right, right, exactly. It's a person, a pilgrim, or you could also have a pilgrimage. A pilgrim is a person that goes on an extended trip, a long distance to visit uh, a religious site, a location, a temple, a mosque, uh, a religious, uh, a place where a religious event occurred. Yes. And that could be, uh, it could be a thousand miles away. And a pilgrim would be a person who makes that travel, who makes that trip. Pilgrim and a pilgrimage is the actual trip. It's the pilgrimage. But a pilgrim is a person on a long, extended trip to a, a religious place. It would be like a Buddhist traveling from the United States all the way to Thailand to visit a Buddhist temple, for example. Something like that. India, Pakistan, Yes, sir. Set to sign deal on Pilgrim Corridor. Yes, sir. A Pilgrim Corridor. America. T-shirt? A corridor. What is a corridor? Corridor is a neutral place between two places, but belong to me and belong to you. There is some neutral place on which uh, no one yes. has a, uh, it is not under the control of two countries. Sometimes it has, but they can, uh, they have an agreement that they can make an agreement that people can come here without visa or something like that. Well, uh, that, there's uh, many ways to express what a corridor is. This is but a corridor is right there. A corridor, a corridor is, is basically a walkway within a building, like right there. And every so often, on the corridor, there will be doors leading into two rooms. So he's waiting for you in the corridor. Oh, he's right outside, right outside the room. The corridor. I'll meet you in the corridor after class. So after class, you would step outside to the corridor, and there you are. Or, in this case, it was a uh, an agreement between two countries to allow pilgrims to be able to pass from one point to another in a in their travels to visit religious shrines. They agree that this space 
will be protected for the pilgrims. A corridor, a column of ground that they can use unattacked or unimpeded by other people. But normally, a corridor is right there in the building. It's the hallway outside the room. The corridor, the hotel corridor, you step outside your hotel room, you're in the corridor. World Series is being played in the United States, the Baseball World Series, and the headline is game number one will be a duel between ace pitchers, a duel, D-U-E-L, duel. What is a duel? A duel. Is a duel meaning two? That's Sometimes people have dual nationality, which means he has a nationality of four countries, dual nationality. Oh, well, now look. Ah, okay. I might be wrong. <laughs> uh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. AL. A duel is a, well, what is now a contest oh, between okay. two people, but the actual word goes back two, three, four hundred years. Yes, I understand that. And it would be a fight, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. more, more than just a punching fight, yes, sir. it would be guns between two people. If you and I have an argument about uh, who owns the property, And it gets out of control, the argument. And they end up saying, we'll have a duel to decide this. And they take, they count off and then turn and boom, oh, oh. It, it's hard to believe that people actually did this, but this is the way they settled arguments. And in American history, there are several famous duels between high-ranking politicians that ended up killing one or the one of the uh, one of the two involved. The, these were fights to the death. It could be with a sword, a duel, a sword, or a duel. A duel. Fortunately, they've stopped this kind of crazy nonsense, but that used to happen. And what they're just talking here, it it'll be a duel of ace pitchers. Two pitchers throwing the, the ball to the batter is a duel between the two people. But it's not shooting guns or stabbing people with swords. It's just a contest now. But at one time, it was a fatal uh, incident where people were killed over probably within a two-week period afterwards. Nobody remembered why they were shot. There was some famous uh, duels in the U.S. in the 17, late 1700s, early 1800s, where senior people within the U.S. government shot each other over, nobody even remembers why. Hard to believe. Teacher, Butterfield, future, uh, major in the back. Butterfield? <laughs> Okay, all right. Major. There's a word here that comes up. Panel starts scrutiny of CP's airport plans. Scrutiny of airport plans. Scrutiny. Scrutiny. Scrutiny of plans. Scrutiny of plans. In other words, the plans that this company has for the airport project will be given close scrutiny, examined, examined, and examined to see if they will work and if they are the right cost 
and that everything is in perfect order. The panel starts the scrutiny, examination of the airport plan. Close examination to see that it is worth the money, that the plans will be acceptable to everybody, and on and on and on. Close scrutiny, watching carefully. something that happened right here. King Sachs, six staff for misconduct. King Sachs, S-A-C-K-S, six staff for misconduct. What does it mean when they say the King Sachs? Is that to throw him out from the job? To throw someone out from the job? Sachs. Exactly. Fired. Fired, yes, same. Yes. Fired. King fires King Sachs. It's more or less like being put in the sack yes, sir. and boom, yes, sir. gone. Extremely evil conduct. To sack somebody is to fire somebody from a job. He was sacked because he stopped coming to work on time, he was skipped days. He, he, he reached the point where he was rarely coming to the office, and so the boss decided to let him go. He sacked him. Sacked him. Here's one in Hong Kong. Let's see. China mulls booting Hong Kong's land. China moles booting Hong Kong's land. Now we did moles. We talked about moles a while ago. Booting we didn't talk about. China moles booting Hong Kong's land. Carrie Lamb, of course, is the chief executive officer of Hong Kong. China is the overall ruler of Hong Kong. China molds. China is considering, thinking, oh, thinking, thinking long and hard about what should we do with that woman, Carrie Lamb, the chief executive of Hong Kong, what should we do? Looking and the they are mulling over, mulling over, booting Carrie Lamb. Booting, what is booting? To prepare. To prepare. To prepare. To prepare. To prepare. To prepare. Well, what is a boot? Boot? Boot, boot. is to prepare to boot, to wear the shoes. To go somewhere, it means to prepare, to make someone prepare. A boot is a large yes. shoe. Yes, yes, a shoe that uh, may be uh, something like this. Yes, sir. A boot. Mulls booting. Oh. In other words, sacking. <laughs> but it's a different expression. To boot is to kick somebody out. So China is thinking maybe we've got to boot. Goodbye, Carrie Lamb. Booting Carrie Lamb. It could have it was King Sachs six for misconduct. It could have been King Boots 6 for misconduct. King Fire 6 for misconduct. King Discharges 6 for misconduct. There are many, many ways to have the same idea. Try this one here. The Foreign Minister, FM, the Foreign Minister 
Lord's Syrian troops packed. Foreign Minister Lauds, L-A-U-D-S, Lauds, Syria troops packed. What does it mean to Lord? To praise. Exactly. To Lord, the Foreign Minister praises, praises, praises. Oh, that's wonderful. You tell oh, that's the best thing that's ever happened. That is just fantastic. That's wonderful. Praises Syria troops packed. A pact. P A C T. Agreement. Agreement. A pact is an agreement between two people, two countries, two large groups for one type or another. An agreement on a certain point in contest. So we can use treaty, treaty, treaty. A treaty. Okay. Uh, that usually a treaty is is, a, is maybe even a much more formal more than, yes. thing. But it is an agreement and a pact to do something and to agree that this is the way the situation will be. A peace treaty, no longer having a war. A pact, an agreement on some. Point. Oh yeah. Did I say no? Yeah, can, 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 can. <laughs> Okay. Let's see. I think that was all I came across. The room. Yeah. Okay. These are these are words. They don't come up in every conversation every day. But over time, you're going to have to meet somebody in a corridor somewhere. So you have to know what a corridor is. Meet me in the corridor. What, 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 who, corridor, what, where, where, who, what, no. Corridor, scrutiny, to look closely, examine closely something. Sacks, fires, discharges, boots. Lord is the praise. And pact is an agreement. Don't make it too complicated. Just an agreement. We agree that this is what's going to happen. A duel, a contest between two people. Fortunately, duels these days don't end up usually in death. It's just a contest between two people, not a fatal uh, act. Corridor. And dual, D-U-A-L, same pronunciation, but uh, different spelling. D-U-A-L, D-U-E-L. Dual. He has a dual personality. He's like two different people. Yes. Dual citizenship. Citizen of country A and a citizen of country B. Two passports or something like that. Two, dual. Any question about the words? As I say, these are words that come up not every day, but they do come up. And it's good to expand your vocabulary. And you can do that with a newspaper, with a computer, looking at the news, just to see how words are used. Uh, in, in, uh, in headlines, for example, just, just you know, Lord's pact, praises, and agreement. And it's good just to take the vocabulary bigger, bigger, bigger. Expand it if possible. Any questions? Okay, we'll go forward then from here.
Yeah, we were going over some words yesterday and uh, wanted to just go over a group here, have the same start, but a different meaning all the way through. study so that when I walk into class this afternoon 
I'm ready for the surprise test. I was forewarned. Before the time came, I had been told, be ready, something's going to happen. Forewarned. Forewarned. Forearmed. Prepared for something. Forego. What is forego? Forego. 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 Forego is to, to skip over something or let something pass that you were going to do, but for some reason you decided it's best not to do it. I was going to visit the Grand Canyon in Arizona, but I decided to forego the trip to the Grand Canyon next week in order to attend my friend's wedding. I decided to forego the trip. I was all ready to go to visit the Grand Canyon when I got the notice wedding scheduled the same day that I'm leaving for the Grand Canyon. So I decided to pass on the trip. Let it go. Don't go to the Grand Canyon. Go to your friend's wedding. So I decided to forego my trip to the Grand Canyon in order to go to my friend's wedding. Forego something is to give it something you wanted to do, go to the Grand Canyon, but uh, something else came up and I had to forego the trip. In other words, maybe next month or next six months from now, I'll go back to the Grand Canyon. But I had to forego the trip now because something else came up. My friend's wedding took precedence over the trip to the Grand Canyon. I had to forego the trip. Question? <laughs> for more, for arm, for go, for get, and forward. Any questions about the words? I'll have some sentences with them in a minute. So, but, please uh, explain forego again. Because, <laughs> forego. Forego. In other words, there's something you want to do, but you have to give it up. You don't want to necessarily give it up, but you give it up because something more important has come up. Uh -huh. In other words, I am planning a trip next Saturday to the Grand Canyon in Arizona. I am going to visit the Grand Canyon. But, just as I was making arrangements for the trip, I received a notice that my friend's wedding is scheduled for next Saturday. Okay. So, I decided, mm -mm, I mulled it over, mo, 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 and I decided to forego forego the trip to the Grand Canyon, even though I wanted to go, I decided to forego the trip in order to attend the wedding. Mm -hmm. Forego. Pass on something that you wanted to do. I obviously wanted to go to the Grand Canyon, but eh, the wedding, eh, I did uh, forego the trip and let's schedule it next month or next year or something like that and go to the wedding. So he decided to forego the trip to the Grand Canyon in order to attend the friend's wedding. To pass on something that you wanted to do, but something else uh, more important, let's say, it came up. So I had to forego the Grand Canyon. Forget, forego, forearm, forewarn. Okay.